Hi, this is Kate. I'd like to share today five things from A Course in Miracles that I found really helpful for me on my journey. And I thought everybody's path to enlightenment, awakening, the peace of God, they're all the same thing. On your journey, you'll have different things that obviously help you. But I just wanted to share some things today that I felt really helped me. And I've heard some communities have law, have some sort of rules about no private thoughts and no people pleasing. And I thought this, these sort of five different things that helped me, I would encourage you to look into these things to see if they're helpful for you. Because these things are set up by, um, by minds that have felt helped by these teachings. So the first thing I would say that is um, the first teaching that I think is the number one um, help, most helpful thing is to have your goal as the peace of God. And lesson 185, I want the peace of God. I want it above all else, really. That's what this lesson is saying. I want the peace of God above all else. And the reason why this lesson is so important in the course is if we can have our desire as the peace of God, we can let go of all other desires. So if we have a desire to be understood, to be liked, to be approved of, to be loved, to be um, anything, to be included, to um, anything that you have a desire for, anything, to be with people, to be alone, um, to succeed, any desire, any tiny little desire you have for anything to do with your body or to do with the world, um, you, that desire is taking the place of the desire for the peace of God. So even the desire to be understood a lot of people say that they really desire to be heard, to be seen, to be understood. They're all hidden desires for something from someone else, from something in this world. So what happens is if we, if we have any sort of hidden desires, they just, they, they're not the desire for the peace of God. So in the desire for the peace of God, we're really saying, I desire peace or I could see peace instead of this desire. Instead, so we say to ourselves, um, I can be at peace if I let go of this desire and see that that desire is just an egoic desire and it's all about the body. So that desire is really about me being a body. <clears throat> So remember that your goal is the peace of God. That's your goal. Remind yourself constantly, I want the peace of God above all else. Very um, important lesson. The next lesson um, I would say is important. Well, they're all, they're all, all these lessons have equal importance. And um, the second lesson is lesson 153 in my defenselessness, my safety lies. Defenses are the costliest of all prices which the ego would exact. So basically the desire, this aligns with the desires for other things, the idols of this world. So an idol would be seen as wanting to be understood or liked or approved of or 
looked at in a certain way or someone to say something or someone to act a certain way to you, that's a desire and that's a defence. So um, the desire is actually a defence because it's sort of making a demand. It's, it's saying to yourself, I really want this to be for me to be happy. So it's defending against the truth. Um, in defencelessness, we actually let go of all desires. We let go of all opinions, all plans. Um, we let go of how anything should be. Uh, we let go of um, having and having being right which is an opinion when we give an opinion we uh, we're trying to um, especially if an opinion about any anyone or <clears throat> anything having said that you might be guided to say something from the holy spirit that might look like an opinion but it'll be something that's helpful for someone or yourself but to, to this defenselessness is actually uh, aligned with being empty. When you're defenseless, you're empty of defences. You hold nothing in your mind that needs to defend or explain. So if you're on social media, it's a really wonderful practice to practice defenselessness in any of your relationships, just being completely defenceless, not, not justifying, not explaining, not trying to get uh, to be understood, um, just letting go of anything. You do not need anyone to understand. Um, you don't need anyone to um, have to join you in your understanding of anything to be at peace. Peace has nothing to do with anyone liking what you understand about these teachings um, and letting go of any, that any one person is better than another person, you know, because that's actually all ego because they're not people they're spirit they're the holiness of god so we're working towards letting go of seeing people as people that they think they're separate you know separate people we're letting go of that defenselessness is the amazing practice that will bring you so much peace it really is one of the fast tracks to the peace of God. Practicing defenselessness. Notice when you feel any part of you that wants to defend or explain or justify and let it go. Just stop speaking. Just let it go. Notice it and just start to notice when something arises in you to have an opinion, to explain. In fact, you shouldn't talk about anyone, any time ever. You really shouldn't speak about anyone, good or bad. Because holiness isn't good or bad. It's beyond that. And that's your only view of your brother. So defencelessness is a practice that really gets you to undo the ego. The ego is the one that wants to justify and explain and hold itself. And in that defencing, in the defences that the ego explains itself and says it's right, we suffer. We're suffering when we do that. We're not in the peace of God. The peace of God doesn't have any opinions or ideas or um, anything that's right. It's beyond right or wrong. So we want to let go of all that. <clears throat> Number three is I rest in God, lesson 109. So this lesson is two, four days or periods when you feel overwhelmed with the ego, when you're really feeling 
this can't do anything else. You're, you can't even read the course. You can't invite the Holy Spirit into your mind to help you see something, another perception of someone or an event. You're totally swamped with the ego and you just feel completely out of sorts. The best lesson for that experience is just to say, I rest in God. I rest. This is a day of peace. You rest in God. And while the world is torn by winds of hate, your rest remains completely undisturbed. Yours is the rest of truth. It's such a beautiful lesson, that one. It is, it's just so divine. Um, that was my go-to lesson for years when I was, you know, I really had days of being overwhelmed by the ego. Number four on the list is um, lesson number one and two. These are some of my favourite lessons. You probably hear me speak about them when I'm talking on other videos. And nothing I see means anything. And everything, sorry, I have given everything I see everywhere. The meaning, all the meaning that it has for me. Um, these two lessons are amazing because you can just walk around and just look at everything and, and do sort of inquiry. What meaning have I given that? What meaning have I given this? You, you can actually use it to um, the, the worldly things, the things that are in the projected dream world. You can look at them that we think it's a real world. So we have to work where we're at. So just look around and just say, I've given that the meaning. I have given that this meaning. I have given and I take responsibility for the meaning you've given it. You're not right or wrong about the meaning. Uh, just notice the meaning. And I just say, look, oh, okay, I gave that that meaning. That's why I purchased that. Um, or that's why I like that. It's not wrong or right. It's just part of that noticing. It will actually free you up from... Um, it, it just has a way of freeing you from actually seeking um, things that aren't practical. You really just want to have things that are practical, that just serve you simply uh, in your life. Just um, let go of anything that you don't need anymore that's not of service to you. Give it away or um, throw it out or... Um, so it, it helps you let go of, um, you might be really buying things or amassing things or concerning yourself with things that really don't have any meaning. Um, everything here is really just for God's purpose for you to, um, extend his love. And unless it really has that purpose, it really has no meaning. And it's really, it's really, it's, it's meaning. I mean, nothing here really means anything. We're in a, we're in a dream, we're in a, an illusion. Um, so uh, there are things that we have here in the dream are really only for, for God. What, what else would you want them? You, you don't need anything. You need very little. Um, to be happy because happiness is having the peace of God. It's got nothing to do with having anything in so-called form. And when we look at the things that we think we want, Jesus says they're just going to be hurled into dust. So we see that everything that we value here will eventually return to the dust, dust to dust. So um, it, we, it's not... If you the, the, just let go of anything that you really desire and you see that comes in, the desire, the desire for something is above the peace of God. The Holy Spirit will just bring everything you need that you need to live in practically. 
to um, play your part in God's part of it, in salvation. You're playing your part. There's no other purpose than um, being God's love, giving your life to God. There's, what other purpose could you have? There's nothing to do. There's nothing to be. There's nothing to have here. We have everything. We're created by infinite love, as infinite love. There's nothing to get. We're already it. We are that. I am that. You're that. We're already that. There's nothing to be. We're already it. So anything that we have is either just something that you're guided to do. Maybe you're guided to make something to give away. Um, the Holy Spirit will repurpose anything you have. He'll give, maybe he, I mean, he guided me to give a lot of my stuff away. Um, and then certain things he just guided, no, keep this, this and this, they'll be what you need. This is just something that you need to, we all have our own, um, we have, the Holy Spirit is guiding us all in the best way for what he sees our life. And, but our purpose really is to just be God's love in the world and to bring his message and to bring everyone into our peace. That's what he says, bring them into your peace. So we, we get the peace of God by having that one desire. We rest in God and we, get, we sink into the peace. Uh, we become completely defenceless. We become completely peaceful and tranquil. Um, we see the meanings we've given everything. Um, you, you can just laugh at the meanings. If you've given something a meaning in the past, you just laugh at it. The Holy Spirit will show you it has no meaning. And if you need it, you just use it. And if you don't need it, he'll just guide you who to give it to or where to give it. The last lesson I'd like to go through is lesson 132. Uh, I lose the world from all I thought it was. This has one of the major teachings in it. Um, there is no world. This is the central thought the Course attempts to teach. This is crucial for um, Course in Miracles students to really um, come to this teaching. There is no world. There is no world. There is nothing outside God's love. There is no form. Anything that takes form is an illusion, has no reality. But where he basically says in this lesson that there's a way of looking at this world differently. Um, he wants us to look at this world, forget this world. Um, he wants us to forget the world of separation. So basically, the way I see it is that what we're looking at with our eyes are just images. They're like looking at an image on a screen when you go to a movie. And if there's no sound, there's no meaning on anything. And the ego mind puts a meaning on everything. And when that meaning is withdrawn, what happens is that leaves a space for true vision to come through. And what I've seen and what the Course says, it says God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. So we look at the dream, the image, the illusory image. We look at the illusion differently. We don't, it's no good going around saying, looking at everything saying that's not real, that's not real, that's not real. Because anything you say about other, other things, you hear about yourself. So the best way to say is just follow the Course's teachings that I am not a body, I am free, I am as God created me. So we come to, if there is no world, there's nothing to get, there's nothing to gain. If I was never born into a body, that means I'm not going to die. I am something that is not in a body or is subject to body conditions. So what happens is we go back to the mind. So this lesson is meant to just 
really stop us seeking in the world, to stop us, to get us from this, uh, this sleeping mind that thinks there's a world and there's something to get from it. It, it tries to, it's presented to get us to give up the seeking and to go within. And when we go within and we quieten our mind and we start to come, we come back to our creator, the beautiful love, this divine, pure love that created us, this quiet center of ourselves where the love of God resides. We go within and we start to experience this beautiful love. So we are asked to forget this world, forget that we're a body, not to deny it. It's no use trying to deny anything. The best way is to come to know the inner self, the self that isn't part of the ego thought system, the self that looks at the ego and notices it and isn't attached to it or upset by it, it looks at the ego thoughts and just gently laughs. It remembers to laugh at the ego's thoughts. It looks, doesn't look at bodies. It looks past bodies and sees the Christ in others. These are all ways that this there is no world is really meant to help us awaken. We really have to understand how this teaching helps us. It, it stops us from seeking and not finding. So we come to say that this world is made up of everything that changes. It's changing, it's being, things are born and dying, there's suffering, there's crumbling, there's rusting, there's decaying and nothing in God decays or rusts or changes. So we have basically projected a world from our infinite limitless mind and we're trying to be, be away from our creator and we're like the prodigal son. What we're trying to do is not working and we're lost and afraid and confused and we don't know how to get back home. So there is no world means that just to know that this world is not our home. There is the heaven is the awareness of perfect oneness. You will experience that even while seemingly being in the body because I've experienced and I experienced that. Now, I experience the oneness of everything I have the peace of God. I have the song of heaven in my mind where I'm singing with my father and we are singing to each other. And I will lay this body down gently one day when I am guided. The Holy Spirit is in charge of what I say here. It's given, I've given my life over there is, once you see there's no goals, there's nothing to get here in this world, you give up and you start to give your life to serve God, to serve the will of God, which is your will. There's nothing in you that desires any other will of, for you than the will of God. There is no other will in your mind. Because God's will is perfect peace, happiness and joy. And that becomes my will. I don't have a separate will anymore. So when my, when my guidance is to lay this body aside, when I'm done with whatever lessons or whatever I'm meant to share here in this lifetime, it will be done. And... I don't know how that's going to happen, but that's, that's my journey. I am here to help. I am here to serve. I am here to honour you, to love you, to be with you, to share with you, to join with you. I have no other goals. I have, there's nothing here 
that has any personal goals. And that, that experience has come about from practicing these things that I'm sharing in this video. So have your goal as the peace of God. Practice being completely defenseless. It's so beautiful to have no opinions and to say, I don't know. I don't know anything. I live in the I don't know mind and it's wonderful. Know nothing. How could you know? God doesn't need you to know anything about anything. He just needs you to come to him with nothing from the past or the future. Just come to him. Just, just come and say, God, I'm here for you. I love you. I'm here. And just be. And just have your beingness. It's the most glorious you know, this is the most glorious experience. And in our, we can be have this peace of God while we're here, seemingly. The body's just um, given a new purpose. And everything you see will just be love. It'll just be God. It'll be love because there's nothing but God. And it will be an experience that until you have it, you can only guess at it like I did. I guessed at what it was like. But just if you just practice forgiveness, do the lessons properly, give yourself over to becoming a student. Just tell yourself, I don't know anything about anything. So therefore I can be taught so Jesus, be my teacher. Holy Spirit, you be my teacher. I surrender. You bring all the truth into my mind. Dear one, I give up. I have, haven't found any happiness and I want the peace and happiness of living in God's mind. So thank you today for joining me. I hope this has been helpful. Blessings.